السلام علیکم کیسے ہیں آپ سب اوپن یور براڈ وے بکس اینڈ گو ٹو پیج نمبر الیون وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ وتھ سیکشن ون فراگس ان دا فاؤنٹین اینڈ یور نوٹ بکس رائٹ ڈاؤن ٹو ڈیز ڈے اینڈ میک اے ٹائٹل پیج فار فراگس ان دا فاؤنٹین فرسٹ لیٹس لک ایٹ دا پکچر آن دس پیج کیئرفلی What can you see? We can see a man who is overweight, yani ke obese hai. He is wearing a garland of marigold. You can notice that there is something flying out of this garland. What is it? Yes, it's a bee that is moving towards his face. The next thing we notice is that there are a group of people standing, probably to welcome this man. Look at this other man. He is also holding a garland, probably to make this man wear it. This means that there is some event and this obese man has been called as a special guest. Let's start reading the story now. Read after me, class. In this story, the author provides a delightful description of a simple incident involving his aunt. In this story, the writer is a very good story. ڈسکرپشن دے رہا ہے ایک چھوٹے سے انسیڈنٹ کا جو ہوا تھا جس میں ان کی آنٹی بھی شامل ہے لیٹس فوکس آن دا فرسٹ پیراگراف میری گولز گرو آلموسٹ ایوری ویئر ان آر بیوٹیفل کنٹری اینڈ دے آر کانسٹنٹلی ان ڈیمانڈ ایٹ فیسٹولس میرجز ریلیجس سیرمنیز ارائیولس اینڈ ڈپارچرس اینڈ فنکشنز آف آل کائنڈس ایف یو ہیپن ٹو بی اے گیسٹ آف آنر at a public occasion be prepared to be smothered in garlands of marigolds i'm a little weary of these welcoming garlands because on one occasion a sleeping bee nestling between the petals flew out and stung me under my chin it made for a very short speech let's understand this paragraph now writer yahan pe marigolds ka zikr kar rahe hain sabse pehle میری گولز ایک طرح کے پھول ہوتے ہیں رائٹر کہتے ہیں کہ یہ آلموسٹ ہر جگہ گرو ہوتے ہیں ہمارے ملک میں اور یہ بار بار استعمال کیے جاتے ہیں کیوں کیونکہ یہ ہر طرح کے فنکشن میں یوز ہو رہے ہیں پھر وہ فیسٹیول ہو گیا شادی ہو گئی کوئی ریلیجس سیرمنی ہو گئی کوئی آ رہا ہے جا رہا ہے ہر طرح کے فنکشن میں رائٹر آگے کہتے ہیں کہ اگر آپ خصوصی مہمان بن کر آ رہے ہیں کسی پبلک اوکیزن میں تو آپ کو تیار رہنا ہے کہ آپ کو یہ مالائیں پہنائی جائیں گی وہ کہتے ہیں کہ میں تھوڑا سا کیئرفل رہتا ہوں ان مالاؤں سے اس کی وجہ یہ ہے کہ ایک دفعہ میں ایک اوکیزن پر گیا اور ادھر میری مالا میں ایک سلیپنگ بی تھی یعنی کہ ایک بی تھی جو چھپی ہوئی تھی جو کے پیٹل سے نکلی اور آ کے میرے چن کے نیچے اس نے مجھے کاٹا جس کی وجہ سے میں ایک لمبی اسپیچ نہ دے سکا ناؤ لیٹس لک ایٹ دا ہارڈ ورڈس ان دس پیراگراف اینڈ رائٹ ڈاؤن ان یور نوٹ بکس Okay class, I have all the difficult words for this paragraph marked over here. The first difficult word is constantly. The second difficult word is occasion. The third difficult word is smothered. The fourth word is wary. The fifth word is nestling. And the sixth word is stuck. Repeat these words after me. as you write them down in your notebooks constantly occasion smothered very nestling stung now let's look at the words for which we're going to write meanings in this paragraph you will be writing down these three The words for which you are going to write down meanings are constantly, smothered, vary. Constantly means again and again. Smothered means covered with. Vary means careful. Now, I'm going to show you a page on which you're going to see how to write down these meanings. This is how you will write it down in your notebook. You'll make a heading for word meanings on a different page and then write the following words along with your meanings.
Let's read the next paragraph. When I told young Gohar about this incident, he asked, Is that how you got your double chin? Actually, the double chin came from my grandmother, who was... A large, generously proportioned lady with a number of chins. Gohar and his sister Sarah liked to play with my double chin, but I would never have dared touch my old granny on her chin or anywhere else. She was a stern, reserved woman who believed that little boys should speak only when spoken to. Writer here tells us that when they told him about his own story, he asked him, do you have a double chin like this? Double chin is a place under your chin where there is more fat and it seems that you have not only one, but two chin. So the writer says that this chin didn't come from this chin, but it came from your grandmother. Which साइज में थोड़ी बड़ी थी यानी कि थोड़ी मोटी थी और उनकी नंबर ऑफ चिन्स थी राइटर कहते हैं कि गोहर और उनकी बहन सारा उनकी डबल चिन के साथ अक्सर खेलते हैं लेकिन वो कभी जरूरत ना करते कि अपनी दादी की चिन को हाथ लगा दे या उनको कहीं भी और इसकी ये वजह थी कि उनकी दादी एक सख्त मिजाज औरत थी जिनका मानना था कि लड़कों को सिर्फ तब बात करनी चाहिए जब उनसे बात की जाए नाउ लेट्स लुक एट द डिफिकल्ट वर्ड्स इन दिस पैराग्राफ इंसिडेंट Generously proportioned, dared, stern. Write these in your notebooks and repeat the words once again after me. Incident, generously proportioned, dared, stern. Now we're going to write down the word meanings for this paragraph. For word meanings, there is only one word in this paragraph, which is stern. Stern means strict. Look over here. Look at this list of word meanings. We have added a new word. Stern, strict. Write it down in your notebooks. Let's move towards the next paragraph. She fed us reasonably well. She kept a great Kansama, but she did not believe in second helpings, with the result that I have spent the rest of my life indulging in second helpings. The writer over here refers to his grandma. She over here is the grandma. And he says that my grandma was very good at us. And she had a great Kansama, that means a great cook. But she had to say that she had to eat food once again. She had to eat food once again. And that's why she उनकी पूरी जिंदगी अब उन्होंने ऐसे गुजारी है कि वो दो बार खाना लेते ही हैं अपनी प्लेट में। Look at a difficult word for this paragraph. Indulging. Repeat after me. Indulging. Now writing down in your notebooks. We'll continue with the rest of the lecture tomorrow.